hate that song. I you do. hate that band. I do. I've learned many things about you over the course of this podcast. I can play. I should. I, I, back in the back in the, when the in, in the podcast history when I was playing things on the guitar, I could have I could have busted out that solo. I'm so sad that time's gone. <laughs> you can play that solo. You can, I can do you can that. play I, da, 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 over and over. Um, I probably couldn't do it as many times as they do in the song, <laughs> but I, I did learn the the top, the the beginning part. I can definitely. Do you know, that. it was a, that's man. It was a man for man that did that. Or Steely Dan. It, I always get those two confused. Man for man. Hey, Fishbot. Man for man was. Um, what did they do? You know, Steely Dan was a uh, amalgamation or or a. Uh, a group hey, Chris. Uh, of studio mu- musicians. You ever read that tale mm-hmm. about them? Yeah. That they, they, no one was doing the stuff they liked, and no one could play the crap they wanted. So they just did it themselves. Yeah. Although, yeah. frankly, they should have stopped. I like Steely Dan. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, it's odd to me that you don't like them because you like a lot of. Sort it's funny because I like like Almond Brothers. Right. Like, no, I don't like. I don't. I just don't like their songs. Yeah. Well, that's. Fine. I'm not saying they're not good musicians. You don't like Ricky? Don't lose that number. No. That's a good song. I don't like it, actually. I don't like it at all. You could have a change of heart. Yeah, it stinks. I don't like their songs. Well, if you, you know don't the, like their you know, songs. Then. You know the problem is they're not Southern. That's true. They're not, they're, there's too much easily, there's too much easy listening in that acoustic it is, jam it music. Very, yeah. It is a very smooth well, I mean, sound. You've got, like, the Almond Brothers are Southern fried, you yeah. know, and yeah. they've got that special sound where those guys just, they just are just sort of the '70s mm-hmm. personified. It's yeah. like, here they come. It's like, hi everyone, I'm the '70s. Yeah, I, yeah. I can get that. I can get that. Um, who sings that? All I want to just do with you. Is it "Do It With You" or "Being With You"? I don't know. Being I don't know what song you. you're singing there. Being with you. Man, I was just thinking about songs that epitomize the '70s to me. That. What about sailing? Takes me away from where I'm going anyway. Yeah, that's that. I would say that would you be know up who there. Sings that? I don't. Oh, I don't I've either. heard the song many times. I just remember it from the commercial from football season. We listen year. to this station at work. It's our station now. It's it's a Easy Rock Paradise. It's a station from the UK, and they play Easy Rock, mm-hmm. whatever the hell that is. And uh, uh, that, but during the day they'll have like an acoustic hour, mm-hmm. and then they'll have an hour of like these weird covers. I've heard the strangest, weirdest covers and stuff on this show. But, I mean, it's interesting to see what was popular in the U.K. Like, they'll play songs over here. They'll play songs there that are, like, I just vaguely know. Oh, yeah. Because they were bigger hits there than they were here. It's amazing. When I was living over there, and we would when I worked at the charity shop, we'd get these. Like, it's a big thing over there for newspapers to come with free CDs. It's like they come oh, in yeah. a bag. And there'd be, like, you know... Hits from the 1985, and I'd be like, "Cool! I should know the. I didn't know any of the songs. It's yeah. like all the stuff that was popular. It's just the two different worlds. It is, but I mean, it's. I like. I we love the station. They play a lot of good stuff. Yeah. What do you think about the Doobie Brothers? I'm okay with them. I mean, they're not my favorites. You know. I like, okay. I like. I like um, that one song, "Roll Black Water." Roll oh, Black Water, yeah. keep on rolling. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, it's funny. We we've heard a lot of. Uh, what was it we heard today? It's. A, there, it's funny to think of these. I'm trying to who it was because I remember th- I was telling my buddy. It's like it's amazing these guys. Oh, it's the Bad Company, right? Mm-hmm. Paul Rogers. Like I've heard Bad Company for years and years, and I, and and when I first heard them, and for years afterwards, I never knew that it was a British guy singing. I didn't even they know sound, that. Now. They sound as American as anybody. Oh, yeah. You know, it's amazing how Brits can do American accents uh, so much better than the other way around. Well, I don't know they if he's know. doing one or they just I mean, a lot of present speaker accepted. A lot of times you can tell when someone's British, right? right? I mean, sometimes you can. Like the guy from House. He's British. He doesn't sound British at all when oh, he's you mean in House. Oh, you mean Hugh LeRae? Yeah. Let me tell you something. I know him from Black Adder and from the young ones. I mean, he, Did and, you actually and from say LeRae a, a or bit is of, just Hugh LeRae? A bit of Fry and LeRae or whatever. I don't know how he pronounced okay. it. We always, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stephen Fry, his partner in crime, mm-hmm. if you're familiar with him. Yeah. Uh, he's a real interesting cat. And, and both those guys came from the same wacky comedy area. Love it, mm-hmm. love it all. This is like the stuff that came after Benny Hill from last week. We've moved, <laughs> we've moved into the eighties. Slowly now. moving into the eighties. You know? I love me some young ones, and uh, that's where I first saw you. And it, like I said, when I saw him, when he saw was the, he, he on young ones? Yeah, he was a bit player on there okay. occasionally, but and he had a show in the UK called A Bit of Fry and Loray or Loray. What'd you call it? Loray, Loray, whatever. No, but, it, I think it's just Lori. <laughs> you, Lori. Yeah, uh, and I used to watch some of those, uh, and, uh, but the. 
you know, th those guys, the uh, Black Adder, Ron Atkinson, like the Ab Fab chicks, those guys, those chicks, they all sort of, like they were in, uh, 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 the Ab Fab chick was in, uh, the young ones had a, had a bit role in that. So they all sort of, there was a big stew of the comedy guys. So you'd see them all, I don't know, I think maybe it's a UK thing where they sort of like, you see people doing everything, you mm -hmm. know. All the time, so I'm familiar with a lot of them. But when I saw him having an American show, I was like, huh. And then he talked. I was like, huh. Yeah. Because <laughs> I never heard him <laughs> not not sound, you know, like he normally does. This is the... Uh, Gary says, I see booze. Oh. <laughs> so, Gary, this is Aaron's... Another, another pre-show bites the dust. This is uh, the Glen Livet Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, 12 years of age. Oh, uh, Thankfully purchased for the Amigos podcast by none other than Graham W. Vebke. So we thank Graham, uh, yes, loyal thank Patreon you, Graham. supporter. And also, uh, it's good. Yeah. You know? He also provided this koozie, so Aaron does, no longer it's bangs a, his bottle a, on the it's table. It's a full Graham pre-show here. <laughs> you know, I hope you feel better, Graham, by the way. We were just talking about you. Graham's been out of the weather. He's had the worst string of luck. I hope he's having a, a better go over here recently. But yeah, normally, we I don't ever drink before the pre-show. During the pre-show, but uh, I had a long day. So. It's, yeah, you got to figure if I back. start now, I should be okay to drive home later. It's, it's Friday night. Um, Here's looking up your old address. Yeah, so. Let's see. Set that over there. What are you up to there, Boatster? Well, I'm just double checking a few things real quick. Um, what sorry. Are you, what are you looking at? I was doing stuff that I should have done before the show started. So, uh, Aaron, mm -hmm. I made a major life purchase the other day. It's been, it's actually been a couple Don't of weeks. Don't tell me this is coins. No. Okay, because no. Chad it, told me you talked about getting back into coins. I, I, I was, was appalled. You know, I was. I wanted to run over here and just smack him on the head and go, no, There, there was no. a time where I was weak, and, and I saw, like, a bunch of people, they're like, you need, to, you need to start stacking silver. And then I read a bunch of horror stories about people that actually stack silver and they just always lose. Is all that their the money. cool guy way to say collect stuck coins, just stack silver? That's where you collect silver bullion, just like tons and tons of silver. To bullion. do what? To just hedge. Are you going to be a Bond villain? Hedge against the incoming deflation of oh, currency. I hear, I hear those ads all the time when my buddies listen to yeah, Rush Limbaugh. They're all on right wing radio. It's like it's, it's like, like we know silver is getting raised poised for a, a yes. huge comeback. It's like uh, uh. it's dumb, and I didn't do it. Good. So. But I thought you were going to collect actual, like, collectible coins. Well, I mean, these are you were just going to, but they're not really. But, but they, what? Well, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I've been down both roads. Well, I'm got, you know, you're a smart guy. What the hell? You know, you're going to sell Amway. I collect dumb stuff. That's not collecting when you're collecting a, a, a clump of bullion. Well, each, you know, anyway. But you're not going to keep it. You're going to sell it, right? None, of, none of this is 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 real. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. So um, I bought a new car and said a much wiser investment. I know that. Oh, this I thought this was gonna be a real awesome revelation. Well, you knew that. But yeah, I knew. They oh didn't yeah, but know I thought that. it was something I didn't know. I was okay. like, I was bracing myself. I was like, I'm gonna become a woman. No, something like that. Yeah, no. Um, so anyway, I bought a. I wanted a large sedan. I don't know why. I just wanted one. I wanted something that was it's comfortable. Gangsta. Yeah. And I wanted something that uh, had a good warranty. I wanted something that I, that I could take in. You don't want to have work done without having to be paid for. Right. I got you. That I can understand. So I, I went, and I also, I'm a sucker for technology. I, I wanted to have something that had the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto, the thing where you plug in your phone and you see your phone screen. Now, can you plug in an Android phone to that as well? Yeah. yeah, it works for any kind of a phone. What about, is there Not any Windows sort of port phone. for my uh, joystick to go in that thing? You know there there are several USB ports, but I don't. Atari I can't speak nine to their, pin. Oh, <laughs> my Amiga, my Amiga joystick. I think that was the next trim level up. I want to actually control the car like that. <laughs> oh, you know, like I'm playing Lotus. Um, <laughs> that would be awesome, man. <laughs> I want to have to check YouTube and see if anybody's modded their uh, their their car play for that. But I got a 2017 Hyundai Sonata. How do you pronounce that? Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah. Hyundai. Um, Hyundai's are made in the same city that I used to live in, in South Korea. The yeah. largest auto producing facility in the world, Ulsan, South Korea. Nice. Um, I spent uh, several <laughs> hours over the course of a couple days t test driving different models. Mm. Um, finally, the guy, I didn't get the highest trim. I got sort of the next to the highest trim. I don't know what that means. Well, you know, trim is, it's like the, uh, you know, you get like the limited, which is the, the most expensive version. And then uh -huh. you go down one step to the sport. And Why that's is it what called trim? That's the uh, automotive. Is that a car thing? That's an automotive. Yeah, I don't, 
Yeah, I got nothing. And so, um, anyway, it's got it's got half leather seats, which I didn't know was a thing. But you I give an eat the crappy seats, and you get the good ones. No, she's she's got uh, that. Well, I guess that would be funny if they were half leather. <laughs> like you've got ha- over here, it's half leather. The other has like naga hide. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or what's a crap? Those bags are made of like you put like sand in. You know, it's, that's what that is. Like burlap. Burlap. That's what I'm looking for. Burlap. Here you go, honey. I'm gonna sit over here. <laughs> no, no, no. This is uh, th- these are um, th- th- this is gold. <laughs> the 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 fronts of the seats and the sides of the seats and the backs are leather, but then like the part that's like where that's heated, yeah, that part is not leather. It's What's cloth. It's made out of. Oh. And so, um, but anyway, it's fine. Um, and the thing that I like most about it is I get a full ten more miles to the gallon mm. than I did in my previous car. In comfort, in style as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. And um, so I'm happy with the purchase. Uh, I, the sticker price was around 20, yeah. um, and uh, I got probably not enough for my trade because you always get screwed on the trade. That's just how it goes. But I don't know enough to sell a car by myself. It scares me. So I just took what they offered. Plus, uh, I, we put two grand down. We ended up uh, financing 17,000 mm. bucks. So that works out to about 315 a month for the next five years. How much is that in pounds? Uh, so like 20 grand. No, it's you're going the wrong way. Pounds is going to be less. It's like oh, thirteen thousand right. pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, so it is uh, Pishbot. It is the uh, is the one point six liter. I don't think it comes in a two. I think it comes in a maybe that's like the the ultra. I thought it was one point six or two point But um, but it's definitely it's not the most powerful engine in the world. Hence the good gas mileage. I'm going from a V six to a four cylinder, so it doesn't have the get up and go like my old car did but the electric car no no that was my old old car the electric car did it get up and go the, it got up and get the battery got up and left <laughs> and that was that was the end Who of made the, that car that was the honda civic hybrid it wasn't it's no fault of the honda civic it's just when you it's buy not. when you buy a car when you buy a hybrid that's got over a hundred thousand miles just oh. fun fact it's you, going to need the battery replaced soon, and that's a, why it was so cheap. If it's a hybrid, do you have to keep the battery? Could you just use the gas part of it? No, they work together. They work in tandem. Oh, that's a bummer. And so, it? yeah, that was my previous car. We've owned a total of four cars since we moved back to West Virginia. Yeah. We have the Ford Fusion, 2008 Ford Fusion. Fancy. Okay. We kept that until we traded it for the Sonata. <laughs> um, when Eep got her driver's license in, like, 2012... We bought uh, a Honda Civic Hybrid, and uh, it was a 2007, and it had it was a high mileage car, but it was isn't cheap. the Fusion also one of those? Or? No, the Fusion is a you can buy a Fusion Hybrid, but this That's was a, this was a V6. That's fine. Okay. Um, then when the when the Civic when the when the hybrids uh, battery they're like it's going to be five grand to replace the battery, and we only owed we still owed like seven grand on the car, so we're like doubling the price of the car in effect. So we traded that in and um, got the Ford Edge that Eep drives now. In 2010, that is a kind of a mid-size SUV. Very nice car. It's a limited trim, um, and uh, but it was a 2010. We got a good deal on that, I feel. So, But the problem was is the Fusion, the brakes were starting to go, and the mechanics that we took it to, both at the dealer and our, our like hometown mechanics, they're like, we don't know what's wrong with your brakes. So... You're just going to have to dry, keep driving. If it feels weird, bring it back. And brakes are not something that you really want to fool around with. If they feel like weird, you die yeah, yeah. horribly in a fiery crash. So we decided it was time for a change, and that's how we ended up with the Sonata. That's quite a car uh, pedigree you've got there. You went down through the list. I, all my cars have been crap except for the new one, so there you go. That truck was that truck's a beast, man. The truck? Yeah. It's a beast, all right. Yeah. That was I mean, Dad's truck, actually, so I can't really say that I owned it. I don't even remember. That, that's the only car I remember seeing you drive. I have a litany of bad cars in my <laughs> in my back catalog that I can't even go. It's such a long and painful list. Did you drive? I remember that that white car that Brent had for a while? The, was uh, that yours before no, it was his? No, that was never mine. Okay. Although, he gave it to my aunt who wrecked it. Oh, so, yeah. That was a fair lane, right? I think it was a Ford Fairlane. Fairlane. No, it was a it was a Korean too. It was a Kia. No, no, no. This is when high school. Oh, you mean the uh, the the uh, Mer- he had a red Mercedes. No, I remember this, that. This was his senior year. Remember he drove. Mercedes? I'm pretty sure it was a Ford Fairlane. That was a good movie, and I hate Andrew Dice Clay, and I still enjoyed it. The Dice Man. Yeah, it's one of those. It's it's funny how there are certain guys that I don't like, but their mm. movies are still good, mm. oh, and sure. that's one of them. Just yeah. like just like um, 
you know, the uh, the Dundee Professor with Eddie Murphy. I mean, no, it's I a classic like it. you know, film. The other one I think yeah. of is, uh, like, I can't stand Howard Stern. I could literally chuck him off a cliff. Mm-hmm. But I loved his movie about his Private life story. Yeah, yeah, I actually thought that was good, too. He's good was, at playing himself. Was... His wacky buddies were there. But, I mean, he's a goof mm-hmm. in real life. But right. I liked the movie. Yeah, I thought know? it was a decent film. It's one of those crazy things. So, um, talk about Scarefest. Scarefest was, it was a happening. Uh, we went down to Lexington last Saturday. Uh, and uh, for us, Scarefest was basically a series of, like, lectures. That's what we, I mean, it was, that's what we went for. We, uh, we saw a lecture on, um, this one guy who was a tarot reader gave a lecture on just all the wacky stuff that happens behind the scenes at Scarefest over the years. Oh, and so all, like all the celebrities he's worked with and stuff who were who were goofs. So the tarot part wasn't anything. No, like, that was nothing, just his day job, and he's he like he was talking about his stories about Corey Feldman, who was a guest there a couple of years ago. And his he said they hired they had a, uh, a dinner for all the people that worked the festival. The Scarefest is really it's not a festival; it's more a con. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had hired a Michael Jackson impersonator to go up on stage and dance, and right. Do a, do an act, and they said they looked over on the stage and they slow, slowly saw Corey Feldman easing on the stage. <laughs> and he said he got up to the stage and he got right near the Michael Jackson guy. And he folded his arms and just looked there in disgust and shook his head. And and uh, later when confronted, he was appalled that they hired this guy. Wow! You know him and Michael Jackson were buddies. Oh. He does a mean Michael Jackson impersonation himself. I'm not exactly sure who Corey felt. Really? Is. Have you seen Lost Boys? No. Okay. Have you seen um, um, what's that Stephen King? Stand by me. Yes. Okay. He is the military kid. Okay. How's that? Okay. Now, he's been in a, a, a slew of things. Is he like one of the Brat Pack guys? No, post-Brat Pack. Okay. He's more like the jerk pack <laughs> or the cocaine-using <laughs> pack. Uh, but uh, So that was an interesting uh, sto- thing. Then we went and saw a, uh, a, a, a lady talk about the history of uh, the uh, uh, hospital in Louisville. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of this place. Waverly. Waverly Hills. That's why I remember Beverly Hills mm-hmm. for that song. Yeah, uh, and uh, that was interesting because she debunked fully debunked that. That was pretty interesting. It's fun to see these people. There's there's a thing that's happening so, in ghost hunting now where they're eating them. They're eating their young, right, basically. Right, where they're like all this stuff is crap. And they're turning on themselves. Yeah. I mean, it had to happen because it's gotten so. I mean, the first guy that had all the backstories. One of the guys, one of the things he talked about was a go. One of these ghost hunters, a real famous guy, or uh, that. Uh, that he hated. I mean, he just goes up, and everyone hates this guy. And is so, that a guy on Ghost Adventures? Yes, it is actually. I knew it. I hate. How that did guy you know? Too. That's a crazy that you. Begin- <laughs> that is amazing, boat that you read my mind. Like we have a rapport. I know. But anyway, know. Uh, uh, so but but that's what's happening. The ghost thing is it's over, and so they're turning on each other bad. Right. You know. Now it's going to be who can get first with the inside story on the. How, what goes down behind the scenes well, of all these you know, shows? You know, they're, they're, it, it, I can't believe it lasted as long as it did. To be honest with you, how much of um, you know these? Because you've been to quite a few of these. Scarefest is not really like this, but like a paranormal sort of get together. What percentage of it is like this is real and this is this is happening? And what percentage of it is like? This is like the science behind the phenomenon. This is not actually what this is. It's the the ratio's changing. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. One of the guys we saw, we saw him last year. He did a uh, uh, he did a bit on the exorcism, of the devil in Connecticut. I think it was the name of the book. Uh, uh, and this guy w- broke down the actual events that the book was based on. Mm-hmm. And this guy's like a. This is gonna sound ludicrous, but and and uh, trust me when I tell you this, it sounds stupid to me too. But this guy's a world-renowned, highly respected demonologist, and uh, and what I mean, well studied. Right. You know, he had literature. Academic. That's sort of guy, right. Yeah. I mean, he's and he's the go-to guy. Mm-hmm. We've seen him twice because last year at Scarefest he did a thing on the, uh, the Exorcist, the, what actually happened, mm-hmm. and there was something there. For this, there was nothing there. I mean, he debunked the crap out of it. But he's very good. Mm-hmm. He's tremendous. I wish I could remember his name. If you want information, my, my girlfriend uh, has a big write-up on Scarefest at, at uh, Teresa, Teresa's Haunted History of the Tri-State. If you Google that, it'll come up. And I'll put a link somewhere. Uh, I'm going to cheap plug. But uh, Tree knows her stuff. and she had, But she's got the full rundown of all these guys. She did a real good detailed thing about it. But it was, I mean, so this guy looks at it from the academic perspective. And that seems to be sort of like the chick that... 
killed Waverly Hills. They said that 63,000 people died at Waverly Hills. Well, she just pulled all the county records, and not that many people died in the entire history of the hospital in the entire county. <laughs> You got to think about it, 63,000 people. people. That's a lot of people. You know, they said in like the worst year, like I think it was like uh, uh, the worst they ever had, the worst. It was like 1,100 people. Give us a quick yeah. uh, rundown of what supposedly went over, because I don't even know what Waverly Hills Waverly Hills was, was a, I believe it was a, tuber- a tuberculosis facility in Louisville. And it was a cutting edge. People couldn't wait to get in there. That's the funny thing. It's something else you mentioned. You watch these ghost things, and they're like, it's all beat up. And they're like, oh, this is a torture yeah, place. It's yeah. got a death tunnel, all this stuff. And it does have a death tunnel. They use it like one or two times. Mm-hmm. And through a weird accident where it actually shot corpses out the other side <laughs> and freaked people out. That was like the last thing they used. It was like in like 1945. Okay. So no death tunnel. Like peop- It wasn't like this place where uh, insanity was going on. It was mm-hmm. like, it was a t- this was there to help people. People wanted to get in here, and it actually succeeded at a, at a phenomenal rate if you consider the, the medical the, yeah, yeah, right. era, you know. Uh, but uh, she, but that's what it was. It's just like, for example, Trans-Allegheny Asylum in West Virginia, that was a straight-up mental hospital. Mm-hmm. It was no... But, I mean, bad stuff did happen in right. there. You know? right. But this was a this was the tuberculosis facility. Mm-hmm. Not that bad. Yeah. So that was interesting. But overall, it was a good time. Then we went on the floor. They had uh, celebrities you could meet uh, and who sign was, autographs. Who were some of the, the shiny The main stars. guy there... Freddy my Cougar. man, no, my, he was there. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was there. Uh, but the main guy for me, which I did not meet, I, I did see him, but I didn't meet him because I did, after I saw him, I didn't want to meet him. Was Machete was there? Now he's my boy. What's his real name? <sighs> he's your main guy. He's, he's your my boy. main guy. But I always call him Machete. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like a, a total idiot. I know his name, but I can't remember. I thought man, but uh, uh, he was there and looked like a old kind of haggard Mexican. He was just beat down. But he was having a good time. Mm-hmm. You know. uh, but uh, celebrity-wise, um, the Mountain Monster guys were there, except for Trapper, which they were at, we met them at uh, Mothman. Do they? I mean, are they pretty much on a permanent circuit? You know, when Well, I, I don't know. When they're not filming, I wonder how they're, many They're right now, they're not sure they're going to get renewed. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they're going to be back. Uh, the uh, A lot of the guys from this, uh, you, the, uh, what's it called? The uh, Discovery America? Mm-hmm. Is it America? Whatever. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, they were like the the uh, like Ghost Asylum crew was there. The Ghost Bros, the Ghost Brothers were so there. So really, Discovery America is pretty much twenty four seven just well, ghost programming. Well, for now <laughs> they have a lot of it. But the Ghost Brothers were there. Uh, Are they like the Property Brothers? No, they're these two black guys that do ghost hunting. Not like that's the their gimmick. Brothers. That's you know, uh, uh, and I guess they're brothers. And mm-hmm. you know, on top of that, um, uh, a lot of psychics. We're there. Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Thank yes. you, Pishbot. Pishbot. I wish I could just carry him around. I, all the time. I'm like, hey, Pishbot, what about this? Like, you, need to, you need to move to West Virginia. You, you so have you a portable can... version. But it was fun. We had a good time. Um, there were lots of people in cosplay costumes. Lots of good-looking girls and questionable-looking people. It's a lot like, I was telling you. Every other con. It was a lot ways. like Mothman, mm. except... I don't remember that many good-looking girls at Mothman. You incorrect, sir. Mm. Yeah, this year, the last two years have been pretty impressive. It's a mixed bag. Yeah, Mothman has is even more wacky. This was less wacky. Yeah, uh, but there were. Uh, I did join the uh, Kentucky Brown Coats while I was there, which is the outfit that does. That's sort of the uh, Firefly fan club. Right, that's right. pretty cool. And uh, uh, we, Teresa, bought like twelve, thirteen books. <laughs> So you found a place that was selling them out. But, uh, you know, it was a good time. That's cool. You know, it was a good time. Um, Nox ER says that Danny Trejo also does the El Paso TV ads. He does a lot of ads. He did ads. I see him all the time on my uh, Roku. He was coming up. Uh, he, he he also did the Snickers commercials that were like, the, I think it was like the Brady Bunch. Mm-hmm. Now he did those. Oh, he, that's Danny Trejo. Okay. Now I know who Machete is. You never... You never knew who Machete. He was also he was in Breaking Bad. I never. He was it. in From Dust Till Dawn. He was in. He's been in a ton of. He's in a lot movie. of kind of movies that I don't watch. Well, I mean, yeah, you're it, you're not gonna see Danny Trejo in like a nice, peaceful film. Yeah. I know you don't like violence. I mean, so like bad. he's not in. Um, and Machete don't te- twit. He wasn't Twitter, in Steel Magnolias. No. <laughs> You'll never see him cry, hopefully. <laughs> it's not going to be They've uh, already taken Clint Eastwood like away Clint from Like a Clint Eastwood us. situation? Yeah. God. When, I, I, when they told me that Clint Eastwood cried in this film, I, part, of me, part of my manhood died. I'm like, are you kidding me? Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry? Get it out. But anyway, it was a good time. We had a good time down there. I took a little video. I'll post it. 
uh, at some point, you know. But uh, so um, this weekend, um, we're not going to be streaming live, but uh, look for some new did. some new content. Uh, actually, I guess we could talk about. We should talk about that. We've on already the show. got tons of new content. Yeah. And there'll be more coming. And we'll talk about all that on the show. That's more show related. Speaking of show related, you ready to start the show? No, I'm not even close to being ready, man. But we we'll might as well do really it. Want to start the show. You know, I was just for before you start the show, I was I was looking at a, I was just look, checking out our videos on YouTube. I was like seeing how they were doing. And last week's show, I guess it was the way I had my screen scaled. It just said, it was episode 113, Amigos podcast, episode 113, dash, bad. <laughs> That's all it said. I was like, well, well they picked They're us. not wrong. They picked us. Just said bad. That's all it was. Well, we'll try to do better. All right. Here's 114 coming at you. Do you have any feedback or? Oh, well, I guess. Any of that stuff. I mean, you haven't really filled me in on what you had in mind for this one. We're going to do iTunes Magnet Giveaway. Uh, Amigos Challenge. Uh, Amigos Challenge. Um, uh, I'm going to give the where you can buy that K&A magazine from, because I forgot to do that last time. Or can you buy it online somewhere? Yeah. And then um, we'll go right into the news. Um, Let me pop the cork on this other pop. I'm parched, as they say. I'm playing in a uh, orchestra concert on Tuesday, and I've got to find my bow tie and my cummerbund. Oh, Do you know where they are? Do I know where? Why would I know? <laughs> what, you think I'm doing Just your laundry. When was the last oh, time? Oh yeah, you they're donned? in my house. When was the last time you donned a cummerbund? It's funny. I just watched. Are we still recording? Yeah, just, this, this is, is nothing. Still the pre-show. So we ended. We didn't really end the pre-show. We never really end the yeah. pre-show. <laughs> Even during the show, it's overlapped. <laughs> um, the last time I wore it was in the Hurricane band mm-hmm. and the dicky and the cover bow didn't have a bow tie i've never worn a bow tie you never went to prom no i never went to prom i was i could have went my senior year but i was too cheap my junior year i was dateless one i didn't go you uh, know who i went to prom with i don't my know. freshman year your mom no no oh. but close your sister-in-law You're, you went with L- leah did i say that right yeah your sister-in-law no yeah no kidding. That's why. That's no, not Leah. Your sister-in-law is Terry. Oh, sorry. It's hard for me to figure out what the hell you're talking about. Why well, at first I that? was confused. When you I took said Brent's that. wife to prom. Well, yeah. Wow, that gets weird. That goes into a weird area there. Well, don't even go any further. That's all. I don't want to hear any more. I don't want to hear any more. And I don't think the listeners want to hear it either. Yuck. All right. How weird. You know, the thing is, well. I know. There's there's, there's, there's a, other that, weirdness you, there. You, that little group of y'all. Yeah. It was like what was like. It was a rich. This, I was I was I was a very small part of the the that that whole thing. That was over before. That was like began. some sort of weird like yeah. religious all, all, sect. All the real stuff went like, down much Koresh much later. Was involved so, in some yeah. capacity. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna start the podcast now. I'm gonna do everything in real time, which means that we're gonna fade the what black. What does that mean? Well, I'm about to tell you. We're going Wait to a fade. minute! Did you just get short with me, Boat? I will reach across this chair. <laughs> Sometimes I still. Sometimes you no, get short with me on the no, show, and I'm like, "Look at this guy!" Seriously, it's 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 because like I still sometimes I'm in teacher mode and I'm no. dealing with middle school students I know what all you're day, saying. and I'm I apologize. You said I'm an immature idiot. No, and I, I, do, I do apologize. No, I'm sorry. Don't. don't get short okay. with me again. So, <laughs> so and we're going to fade to black. <laughs> 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 and then I want to do. Then, then You're we're, in trouble th- tonight. Then, I'm gonna, then we're going to hit my music. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. What would your okay. wrestling theme be? Probably Iron Man. I oh, just said that because I played it. <laughs> you unimaginative goo. Just, I know what you're going to do. Okay. Okay. Just do it. Okay. Support the Amigos podcast and keep Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, 
Aaron Dowdy, and John Bodokar Schaller. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. <laughs> and I'm Aaron. And today we're going to talk about road rash. Road rash. Yes, sir. Pro tip. Don't Google road rash without actually putting game in words What next happens to it. if you do that? You get a lot of things that you can't unsee. Road rash is real. Is road rash all oh, you mean like pictures of people that right. actually had road it's rash? It's no good. It's no they good. always say if you're going to ride a motor bike or motorcycle that you're going to get it. It's a matter of when, when. not mm-hmm. if. That's why I choose not to ride a motorcycle. Cowardice. Have you been on a motorcycle before? We talked about this already. Well, let's talk about it. Remember again. up and down the coal pile? Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about I, that. You know, we're okay. in West Virginia. Yeah, there's a lot of coal. There used to be a ton of coal. It was just sitting out. You just go grab a chunk. Mm-hmm. You know, set it on it's fire. Cold. Keep <laughs> warm. Power stuff. Not anymore. But there been my uncle would drive me up and down the coal piles on his little dirt bike, and that was the last time I cared to be on a motorbike. <laughs> Plus, it hurts my crotch. Hey, what what can you do? I don't know. Listeners, faithful viewers, I'd like to make an appeal to you at this time. We are in desperate need of iTunes reviews. And uh, we would like to um, have a little contest about iTunes reviews. Okay, Uh so if you post an iTunes review between now and next week, we are going to randomly draw a winner. And it doesn't matter if it's positive or it's not. (laughs) Um, You can just, just be honest. You mean a negative review and you can they can still win? I didn't say that. I just meant, I just said it doesn't matter if it's positive or it's not. If it's not positive, it's negative, isn't it? I don't know. You don't be so dualistic. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, we will draw a random name from those. And we have, thanks to Jonas Rulo over in Hawaii, Living the Amigos dream. Magnets. I will send one of these to your house. And you can put it on your fridge. You mean anywhere in the world, boat? Anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter if you live in Gabukistan. Uh-huh. I will send you a magnet. Let me ask you a question here. Okay. Now, I don't want to poo-poo this contest. Okay. Because it is important to feed the Apple machine by giving these reviews. But this is sort of like bribery, isn't it? Well, it's not bribery if you say that it doesn't have to be a positive review. But it is bribery. It, it kind of is yeah, bribery. Okay. So you're bribing our listeners. In the- Please, that, that's the number one. I'm down with that. As much as you know, some hosts of Amigos hate Apple and everything they stand for, um, iTunes is still the primary driver of discovery for new podcasts, and so we want to we want to grow our audience. We want to bring more Amiga fans into the fold, and so the best way that we can do that is to uh, the more views we have, the higher we get up on the new and notable charts and the you know popular video game charts and stuff like that. So, if you could write us a review, we'd we'd really appreciate it. If we get higher on the reviews, let's say we get real high. Mm-hmm. I mean, real freaking high, right? Like Cleopatra, we don't Joe get DeMarc, nothing. We don't Raphardite. get nothing extra, right? We're just sitting, we're just chilling. Doesn't really matter in the long run. I want to have, I want to have thousands you spread the word? of Amiga fans. I want this to be just like a weird cult. Yeah, and you're the and you're the king of the cult. Not just me, me and you. Oh. weird kings of the cult. I'm like a sub king. But really, iTunes reviews. If you know, that's a, to get a free magnet. The magnets are in demand. Well, you know, we'll send you one out. That's yeah. an easy. That's an easy bribe. I'm yeah. down with that. It'll take you thirty seconds. Just Am I undermining this? I am, aren't I? No, I, he's right. He's go ahead and you know, if you don't mind, drop us one. What? I'm down. I'm down with it. You know, iTunes, <laughs> so, man. That's a terrible idea. It's iTunes. It was my idea. That makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that was the other thing. Well, this was sort of my idea. Okay. You know, what other ideas start have to you show, had lately? <laughs> start the show and all. Man, we are off the rails tonight, boy. <laughs> what other? Oh, let's talk about the Amigos Challenge. All right. We haven't had one for a while, have mm-hmm. we? So uh, what is the Amigos Challenge, well, it was broadly a, speaking? Our our good and dear friend, Brill Barracuda, kicked this off. Gosh, it was, what, about February or March we did the first one. And I believe we did. Do you remember what the first one was that we did? Uh, we did. I know. I can just name I know some I was of them. horrible. There I, was California games. Yeah, that there was, was that was your Jaguar. Jaguar. <laughs> Jaguar. I tried to say it the same. I tried to say it both ways. American at the same style. Time. Yeah. Jaguar. And British style. Um, uh, yeah, that's right. And boy, I didn't do real well at that or the bag. Yeah. And then the bag. And then we did pinball. Right. And now we're up to episode yeah. four. And challenge they were, they were wildly successful. Uh, uh, well, yeah, they were pretty successful. They were. So. People have been asking, a few mm-hmm. people, uh, when's the next one coming? So uh, I got off my lazy, good for nothing, don't do anything mm-hmm. for the show, but, and I went ahead and got this ball rolling. Now, it wasn't my idea. 
Uh, but uh, we're going to do Turrican 2. Best um, score off one life. Mm -hmm. Your first life, first by the life. way. And you make the video and send it in. Uh, please uh, go to our forums. We have forums, which we don't, We should mention these more. Yeah, everythingamiga.com slash forums. That's I right. And uh, uh, there's a section in there called the Amigos Challenge. If you'll go in there, and their rules are all put up. And i got to give Bar Brittle Barracuda 100% of all the uh, acknowledgement for this. He did a great job of spelling out exactly. I mean, he spells this out. A child mm -hmm. could do this, to, could, could get these games going. You, there, and there's instructions on where you send your, the video you make. And at the end of the, uh, I can't remember the end date. I believe it was the, uh, two, not next week's show, but the show after will be the end date. And then I will, I will uh, cl try to cludge all the video together in, in a beautiful way like Brutal did. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a, 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 a release of video that has all the games. But this time, we just to sweeten the pot, we're going to also give away one of these awesome Amigos magnets straight from Hawaii to the winner this time around. So this is a prize fight. Yeah. You get a cool prize if you if you win. Yeah. Uh, so if you're and as an added bonus, I'm god awful at Turkin too, and I know you stink too. I'm terrible. So uh, right there, are two of the people that are going to be in the contest are <laughs> almost per certainly out of running. So there's there's two people you can beat right off the bat. Someone mentioned this, and I'll no cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They told me that they must have known how bad I was. Uh, so, but anyway, for more details, head over to the forums, uh, or just to hang out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to get the forums. Uh, you know, forums these days are, you know, they're not, that's not a lot of people using them, you know, but I like to get the forums up and running. Like, I, I've been checking them a lot more and stuff, so if you're down, I just want to chat. Hey, I'm also always looking for suggestions for some Amigos plays. I've got some stuff already lined up uh, for some future Amigos plays there, so suggestions. Hey, feedback for the show, you know, uh, we could take it. Uh, you know, uh, drop us a line on there as well. That's always a good thing. Or you can shoot us an email. What's the, what's the email? Amigos address? at AmigosPodcast.com. That's right. So, yeah. So, but anyway, yeah, pop by, get the rules, and we'll fire it up. But it's always a good time. Even if you stink, send in something, it'll be fun. Uh, I also want to give a little follow-up on uh, the magazine that we talked about last week, that K&A magazine, that uh, new Commodore it's right here. and Amiga magazine. Which, ah, just grab it real quick, this guy right here. Um, you can purchase this magazine at this website, ka plspl en main you might not eat all, need all those extensions. Maybe just ka-plus.pl. Um, and again, this is a magazine that is in English. It's proofread by a native English speaker. Um, it is very well put together. Look at that. Um, this is Aaron's just looking at a Bruce Lee, a 3D Bruce crazy? Lee remake article. We're, this is what we were here. talking about last week. Me and Boat were discussing this off air. Yeah. There's some good articles in there. There's hardware stuff. There's stuff for all the Commodore machines. Lots of game reviews. And... Uh, uh, just, I mean, I would have to say, I was pretty, I was very surprised. I couldn't believe when he handed it, when this came out of the package, I'm like, man, this is like a... It feels yeah, solid, you know? for And sure. of course, yeah, harp on the fact that, man, the pages are good, the stick, the content's great, too. Yeah, it matches yeah. it. So it's not like, just like, well, this is a real good piece of paper. It's actually good stuff. So yeah. I, we endorse this, yeah. this, this Please product. Please check it out and support them. Yes. All right. Um... Now we shall move on to the world of Amiga news. There's lots of news. I want to start off. I want to start off with the newest news first, just because I. It sort of uh, co goes along with what we were talking about last week. Um, <clears throat> our good and dear friend Adam Bradley. This guy's a news tidbit machine. It's a very top boat. That's that one. It's just that. That's it. The Amiga Mini. Now, uh, if you look at the Amiga Mini, we talked about this last week in our little mini conversation about will someone do this now look at that picture and if you're not if you're listening on the radio uh, i will just explain what we're looking at here in this picture of the amiga mini it's a raspberry pi with one of those little amiga uh 3d printed cases around mm -hmm. it. i'm going to go on the assumption that that's not the actual product because uh, that's a raspberry pi with a cunningly <laughs> right. designed it's, case that you, you can, can buy. easily tell by the way the ports are and everything that that that's is a raspberry right. pi uh, but, the, and this article, so right there I was like, ah, screw this. This is a crap article. But then at the bottom I read something that said, these, whoever is making this, and again, I'm not endorsing or saying this is even real. I'm just telling you what this article said. They say that they, since Cloanto has picked up the, uh, 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 some of the trademarked, the, like the A, I think, and the Amiga, they, Cloanto picked up some of the loose uh, trademarked properties 
from Commodore, mm -hmm. you know, that were floating around. Right. Uh, these guys say they're working out or have worked out a deal with Cloanto to produce this item. Well, if anybody, you know, one of the things that we were talking about was that there are so many different pieces with the Amiga because of the ki the Kickstarter ownership thing, the name of the company thing. Right. You have to work with Cloanto. That's if right. This thing is going so to when I read that, uh, that my ears perked up. Okay, now you got before you got nothing. Mm -hmm. The little picture, that's nothing. Right. right? When you say, okay, yeah, we're, we're, we've got, we're, we're working out a deal with Cloanto, that's something. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that someone's working out a deal. And like you said, Cloanto have the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it doesn't matter who you make videos. It doesn't matter who you make game uh, deals with or anything else. If you don't have Kickstarter, you got nothing. Right. You got no, and, if, it, and uh, again, you've got a, a company in Cloanto that also has, has some sort of deal worked out with the WinnieOE group since they sell that. You know, and that, I mean, uh, uh, that is when UAE in it with a fancy wrapper, effectively, right? Mm -hmm. So they've got something worked out there. So by signing a deal with Cloanto, you've got the Kickstarter, the trademarked uh, logos, and you've and you can probably work something out with the emulation. That's the biggest chunk of the battle. Yeah. And at that point, plus we know Cloanto has the rights to distribute some of these games for profit, right? Mm -hmm. Deluxe Galaga being one, mm -hmm. the games that come with it. So you're getting some, you've got also, the, you know, it makes one wonder why Calanthus doesn't do this themselves, to be honest. And maybe this, that's part of the gimmick. Maybe so. Uh, but uh, if you, and there are plenty of people out there that no longer exist, their games are in public domain. There's probably enough public domain games or people like uh, Cinemaware that just gave away their games that you can work on a deal. For you could put a ton of games on, a, on an item and, and, and still not have to pay a lot of rights fees. Right. right? So this... Again, just because someone says, hey, we've got a deal with Cloanto doesn't mean there's a deal. And I haven't heard anything from Cloanto, but it give, gives one pause as to think, hey, maybe this is it. Yeah. So we'll see. But I thought that was interesting. Yeah, It, it me came too. out pretty, pretty recently. Especially considering we spent a great portion of the last episode talking about <laughs> yes, it. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. So there was actually, I got a lot of stuff this week. Let me consult the thing here. So um, we've got a, a new uh, playable EXE from the company. I don't know why I keep putting these in because they make so many, but this time around it's Jet Strike. Has been upgraded to the 2.6 engine, which is, means anything. If you if you're not familiar with the company's EXEs for Windows, anything 2.5 and back, you can't play on Windows, the new Windows. It don't work. And trust me when I tell you, I've tried every conceivable thing. It don't work. Uh, so Jet Strike. Have, have you ever heard of this one, Boat? Uh, I think that is this. No, this looks similar to a game that um, that I've done an Amigos plays on, where you basically you fly a plane over an island and you bomb things. <laughs> Uh, but this is not that game. All right. Well, there you go. Jet Strike. And I believe, as I was going to press, they released another one, but I didn't I didn't catch it in time. This looks so. cool, though. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, this got popped out, and at first I was like, well, is this legal? And when I say that, I mean, are these videos being distributed? But as far as I could tell, they are. So uh, um, this is this is an uh, article. that It's actually a YouTube video from uh, about Commodore Amiga and Amiga stories from Bill Hurd. He's a former Commodore engineer, and it's like uh, 90 minutes, and apparently this is, I don't know if this was extra content on the uh, Viva Amiga um, disc that they've released. I'm not exactly sure. I, I think it actually was, according to what that just said, this was something that the Kickstart people that kicked this was in. like a bonus for them. Right, so, but apparently they've released it to everybody because the mm -hmm. video is linked up. It was up. probably like a time. I thing. haven't got to watch this yet, but it's on my it's on my docket for this week because it was it's like 90 minutes. But I'm down with that, so that would be kind of fun. Now, this article popped up, and it was everywhere. It's another one. It's Hey, it's happening. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. How, like I felt like the Amiga was sort of like my modern console or something. Because, I mean, you, there's enough news where there's something going on like every day, right? Right, right. And so this is something else. It was an article um, in Popular Mechanics. And it's a, uh, it's, it's a, the cult of Amiga is bringing an obsolete computer into the 21st century. And it's an article about <clears throat> the Amiga, where it's been, where it's going. They talk about the new, the new machines. They talk about some of the accelerators, you know. They, they talk, you know, it's like I, I just spent $600 on a, on a, on a computer from 1985, yeah. which it's all, you know, that is a and weird it, thing to say to somebody. What's you know? funny is, is um, you know, the, the people that they interview, these are not people our age. And by our age, I mean your age, the age of people that were using Amigas at the time. These are millennials, yeah. and they're spending this kind of dough. It's uh, you know, I read this, and I, first of all, every time I read an article like this and it goes into the past, I want to reach into my time machine and just smack around the people that ran Commodore for just, I mean, they had the golden ticket. It just, mm -hmm. I know, 
we're going down the same road again. I'm not going to go down, but it just it really irritates right. me. You've got this ultimate machine. This does. This article also goes into like all of the nonsense between Amiga on the Lake and the new Amiga that. guys the, which, and all that. Thankfully, stuff. they got that worked yeah, out. Yeah, I would love to talk if if anyone from Amiga on the Lake's list, I'd love to talk to one of you guys and maybe get you on the show. Yeah, just because they're 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 being American very tight distributors. Yeah, they are. And I, I never that. hear much about from those yeah. guys either. Uh, and I, but I mean, I've used their I've used their store, and it was really I was very impressed. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. Um, let me see. Oh, okay. Another article about a fellow who has converted a Amiga CD game to an HD F file, HD a hard drive conversion. It was a game called uh, Wasted Dreams. Now this I'd never heard of this game, and it looks pretty good. It was a late uh, release on the Amiga. Uh, have you ever heard of this one? No. Uh, it looks it looks pretty slick. Uh, the fellow that did the uh, Conversion is a guy named Damien D. Apparently, this isn't his first radio. I don't know if we've mentioned it was other stuff or not. I don't think we. If we did, we didn't mention his name. Mm-hmm. Looking at this, it looks. I mean, it looks sharp. Yeah. I, was, I, I, I mean, it looks. How fluid. would you? I mean, what what kind of a game would this remind you of? This really kind of defies because it looks like sort of almost like out of this world or something like that. It, but it's sort of like but it's chaos top engine. Down. It, it's but your your protagonist sort of looks like a normal dude. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, it looks but it, yeah. It's it's the chaos engine perspective. We're got to we're sure. got to have a look at this one, but yeah. like I said, I never heard of it. Yeah. To be honest with yeah. you, um, something else I want to touch on, and this is a little outside our realm into the C sixty four, but Ron Hubbard, the uh, musical genius. That's L. Ron Hubbard. Right? No, it's not. And by the way, when you try to Google this guy, L. Ron it's comes up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, he has a Kickstarter going. Uh, it's sort of a pricey to get on board Kickstarter. I was talking to uh, uh, who was it? I was talking to about Chris it. Folds. It wasn't Folds, and it, to to uh, jump in the, just to get the digital uh, version of these songs, you're talking like it's like almost thirty bucks. Right. But uh, it looks like it might be interesting. I'm interested to see how it goes. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, hey, any old school commoner guys trying to get in there and get them a buck, I'm down with the you know I'm down with the clown on that. Let them mm-hmm. make a few bucks uh, on it. Um, I think that is all the news that I've got this week. It's not site related. What do you got for the site, Boat? Okay, well, let's pull up everything Amiga.com. Which is a lot of crazy stuff this week. And uh, we have uh, Dreamcatcher is back with a review of Impossible. Did you? I, you know, it's funny. Before you get into this, I read the. Uh, it's. Don't ask me why this came up. It, me and my partner were talking about the um, coal mining strikes of the early 80s in the uk mm-hmm. okay and it was before this article came up we were ta- i can't remember what spurned out we were listening to some music i think or something on that radio station and i didn't realize how much i knew that they mined coal in the uk right in england but i didn't realize how much mining went on oh yeah and it was a huge was industry a huge up thing. until the early 80s when they had a uh, and i don't want to try to go through british history and screw something up but effectively uh, they had a what amounts to an illegal strike, and then Margaret Thatcher dropped the dropped the hammer on right. them, and then that effectively ended coal mining. You know, and it was really it was interesting uh, to to read. And of course, we're going through a uh, you know we're our coal mines are getting killed here, mm-hmm. in a, not quite the same way because we're going out with a whimper instead of a bang. It's a, it's a different thing because yeah. here they've always been private, and in the UK the mines were owned by the right. government. And mm-hmm. something else, my dad was a co- uh, what worked for the uh, was not a coal miner, but he was in the uh, steel workers union. I think it was in the uh, yeah, I think that's who it was. But he was, and they had a strike. And I, from what I heard, my dad went, went crazy at this strike. He was like bashing in windows. Really? And, I mean, wow. striking striking is, I don't know how it is overseas, but I mean, over here oh, it's yeah. a big deal. If you yeah. go on strike and scabs try to roll in, mm-hmm. low be the man that try to get past that picket line, they're in for a beat down. Right. right. You know, so I can imagine something where you're fighting for your whole industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I bet that was ugly. Yeah. You know, and it seems like as a little kid, I vaguely recall hearing about this on the news, mm-hmm. but you know, it was in the UK. And then so um, we're just talking about that. And while we're talking, I click on this, and the first thing that comes up is a little quick brief history of the coal mining thing <laughs> i'm like what are the odds of that happening you know and then of course it goes into the monty mole stuff mm-hmm. but it was it still it was it was wacky yeah you know that yeah. was a long way to go for that wasn't it <laughs> so uh make sure you check out this this is another great great read from dream this makes me want to play these games yeah. i was looking at i've never yeah. played any yeah dream has a real knack for finding just the most inviting screenshots i know these things so are like, good. Man, I, I need know. to i need to just jump right into this thing 
So um, that looks like a really neat game, doesn't it? Though? Yeah. Have you yeah. ever played those? Uh, I've read um, in Retro Gamer they did they did some write ups of the Mighty Mole games, and I, I need to check them out because uh, that was more of a Spectrum thing, I think. Uh, but it's it's definitely something I, I'd love because I love those those Spectrum platformers. Um, I actually think that that is um, the only Dreamcatcher review this week, but we also have an Amigos Labs uh, from this week. Um, and this is booting an Amiga 500 from a SuperDrive removable SciQuest. You're going to have to talk about this because I don't understand any of those words. Uh, I used to have, man, I'm telling you, dude, it's another thing I used to have and got rid of was a Supra removable hard drive. Actually, I, the one I had was a... Uh, was it super? It was a uh, um, gosh. It was SideQuest. That's what he's got. Yeah, it was a SideQuest, and you can see it if you watch the video uh, right there in right there smashed into the super box. That's a big external box, and it is a SideQuest. Now the one I had was an external that hooked into the parallel part of the way, which is slow going. But SideQuest removable drives were uh, hard drives. I think I, the ones I had were forty meg, and they were cartridges, and they were. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's say five by five inch squares. You and you you'd put them in, and you and you uh, and you would boot them up, and it would be that would be a hard drive. And, and so effectively, in my case, the external was an external one. So it was effectively you're putting it into a, an external case. It's like you know. Now what what uh, uh, the huckster's got cooking here is he's got an internal, which this was big money. These would have been very nice to have, and what he's done. Is hooked it into the super external uh, enclosure, and uh, and is booting. So I'm guessing it's probably SCSI, and and he's using it to boot up his Amiga. Pretty cool. Uh, 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 Gary is he's the man because he just did that video on the zip booting off the zip drive. If you could have had uh, when I got into the in the SideQuest drive, it was sort of near the end of its of people caring because at that point, yes, even a forty. Meg Super was looking a little slim. I think they made an 80, and they may have went on up from there. Those are the ones I remember. But uh, on the Amiga, if you'd have a, one of these 40 gig uh, uh, drives for SideQuest, the you've got. I mean, that's a pretty sizable drive on the Amiga. And then the fact that you can buy more cartridges for it and just have them labeled, you could have like games A through B, C through D, right. whatever. It would be real. I mean, it would have been awesome to have. Uh, and Gary, you know, I love what Gary does because he takes these. I mean, in today's Amiga world, you don't need a SideQuest or a Supra, or I mean, a, or a uh, or the Zip Drive because you've got, you know, you can a lot of these Amigas you can put a, a CF card. That's in there, right, yeah. you know, or have some other means. But it's still just the fact that he's getting this stuff to work, and I, I envy the fact that he can tinker around this stuff to and have enough time to do it because I would I would be yeah. doing the same exact thing. I mean, look at that workbench. He's just got everything laid out there, and yeah, he's got a he's got a. a it's very it's a, it's a treat to watch these. I watch them. Gary's videos are very popular. Yeah, I mean, he gets a lot of action with them, and it's because the people. It, what's it show you, right? It shows you that people are still tinkering with this old hardware, mm-hmm. man. And I'm the same way. I just like to, even if I don't have it, I like to watch it. I'm like, man, look at this. Look what he's done. I always thought about doing that, but I could never. I never had the stuff at the right stuff at the right time. You know, right. Gary is basically fulfilling your fantasy from a hardware perspective. You can live vicariously through his riches. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and Gary's actually here in the chat, so thanks for uh, hey, being with us, Gary. That's to you, buddy. Um, all right. You know, it's before we get off the topic of the external hardware stuff. I was on the uh, Facebook Amiga chat today, and someone out of the blue, and I thought this was funny. He goes, "Listen, because I'm desperately looking for an XDS." Drive, which is that crazy drive that I picked up when I got that Amiga bundle. So someone somewhere actually cares enough about this wacky peripheral to want one. Hey. So I have contacted him. Yeah, over, over yeah, the situation, but it was it was it was. I thought that was amusing. All right. Well, you Aaron, want, you want to? I guess we should probably sh- do a little shill on our uh, on our other videos that we put up this week. We actually had a few other videos. Did put, we? Yeah. Well, we put up the Saturn stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know this is the Amiga show, not the Saturn show, but we, me and Bo, have, once again, as we mentioned last week, have dipped our toe in the in the pool of some other some other video games, and we actually put up a couple videos this week. We put up. Uh, um, one that's particularly wacky, which was a game called uh, Pinball Graffiti, and uh, what can you say about this game, Boat, for the for the people that are curious? Um, pinball Graffiti is a pinball simulation. 
and uh like in by pinball simulation i mean like pinball life simulation you actually play um as a uh the game is actually you are a person like a pro pinball player and you have to manage your money you go to the bar uh you can play machines at the bar you can enter tournaments um, you can um, play basketball in one of the most atrocious mini games Bo, <laughs> ever devised. Bo said this during when we were filming this, and I, I'll have to say if you if you flip through this video, just flip to the ba if you want to see something really bad, flip to the basketball section. It is it is so much like the old Atari twenty six hundred basketball, except worse, right. much much worse, right? Uh, to play, and and it the, the and it's and the thing is, this guy, the character you play in this game was a former collegiate basketball star who got tragically injured while saving a child and he pushed him out of the way of a car and it ended his career. But this former collegiate star will go out and bet on basketball, a la white man can't jump, and try to win money and also try to win money from suckers in bars. So right. this is a real low-rent pinball champion. <laughs> and the pinball is nothing to write home about except at certain points when you the ball reaches certain parts of the screen – the camera will zoom in to the bank turn or whatever. I don't know if it's playing a canned piece of video. Yeah, or it is. It's definitely a canned piece but it's, of video. But it's unusual, isn't yeah. it, Boat? Yeah. And then we also did uh, Marvel versus Cat. No, it was Marvel versus Street Street Fighter. Yeah, Marvel versus Street um, Fighter. On the Saturn, the Japanese version, which was an interesting uh, game to play. And it was a lot of fun. We had a good time doing that. And I think... Jesus, do I seem like I've got... Oh, we've also got one coming out this weekend that will be along the lines of the game we're reviewing today. So that's sort of our MO on this. We're going to try to play other console versions of the game we're playing on here and see how they how they play. Yeah, yeah. You know? so. So, so we'll be... And we're, we've got a bunch of new Amigos plays that are going to be coming out. I mean, we're just going to have a slew of them coming out. So I'd say over the winter, we won't have any shortage of those. Because we've got a new way to shoot them, and it's a lot yeah. of fun for us too. The, we uh, get to actually do it together. The, which is the great. new the new setup is over at Amigo Studios East, aka the arcade, aka the clubhouse. That's right. Um, and uh, on uh, Sunday mornings, uh, I head over to uh, Aaron's <laughs> house, and we spend a couple hours before his family gets up, and uh, we uh, we we play some games and have a grand old time. It was that so. was I was a lot of fun last time. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. So yeah. you know, it'll be it'll be it'll be a good time. And again, if you've got requests, I mean, we're talking anything right. from any genre of game. Because Aaron's got system. it all. He's got it all got there lie. at his fingertips. But I mean, if there's anything you want to see, or just wouldn't listen, if you thought to yourself, I wonder what Boat and Aaron might say about blah. Hey, we'll, mm -hmm. when we'll try anything. You right. Know? right. I don't care. So go to the forums and make a suggestion, or just send us an email or, or a message. You know, we're down. We'll try just about anything. We've got the Amiga out there now. We've got. Uh, uh, I'm going to have my Atari computer out there, so we're going to have uh, just a slew of options. We've got all the consoles, all the old stuff, so if you want to see something, we're literally, we don't care anymore. Yeah. We'll play anything. Hit us up. We're ready. All right, Aaron, we are ready to talk about Road Rash. All right, let's give her a whirl. So... And we are back with the game. What? Okay. Support the Amigos podcast and keep the... I will cut this and no one will ever know the difference. You got to turn the volume down, didn't you? Uh, no, but uh, I forgot to turn on the audio on this. Let me... Yeah, this was the one place that I didn't have it. So chat room, 
You saved us. You saved us. Now you have to make an edit, Boat. Yeah. Sorry. So, unfortunately, the whole thing I did at the beginning where I mixed in the... Um, where I mixed in the the intro and I hope that I wouldn't have to render in Premiere. I've got to do so that. So where are we going to start? We're going to start right at the beginning of Road Rash. The, the very very beginning. Well, the, the no no not the very of, very beginning. The review. Yeah. Oh, we're going to hear your clever sketching story. I'm, I may leave that out. That was kind of lame. <laughs> <laughs> the pre said the the Patreons yeah. will hear it. And that's that's all that. Uh, no, they won't. The audio was jacked up. Oh no yeah. No one will hear no it. No one. No one. So heard, I'm, I, I you're the only one. <laughs> I'm going to give you a countdown, and we're going to just go into it. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. All right, Aaron, it's time to talk about Road Rash. Again? Again. So, Road Rash. Let's talk about this. Now, this game, I have only had a cup of coffee with in, in my illustrious gaming career. Uh, this, uh, I'd heard about it. I heard a lot of good things. And here recently, I, it makes a lot of lists of popular games, you know, from back in the day. Uh, and so, I knew it had a... a it had a lot a good rep before I played it. Now you did you play this much back in the day? You know, I didn't play Road Rash, but I played a game called Skitchen. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of Skitchen before? Mm, I don't know. Okay. It sounds dirty. S- well, it was it was supposed to be pseudo dirty, I think. Uh-huh. So th- this was during the uh, the early 90s attitude era. You know right. about the attitude area in wrestling. I think these overlapped a little bit. Right. And this is where you had lots of tude. And uh, there was a guy on a commercial that was like, I go skitching all the time. And it shows him like on the back, like holding <laughs> onto the back of a truck, Marty McFly style, mm-hmm. while, he's, while he's riding a skateboard and hitting people with a chain. And of course, you know, I was 12 years old. I was like, I'm going to skitch too. So I told my brother, start riding your bike real fast. And then I'd run up beside him and jump on my skateboard and grab onto the back of his seat and go, I'm skitching, I'm skitching. <laughs> So you actually just, said that? Yeah, as I was riding down the street. Were you a lonely to the child? Of my neighbors, yes. That's what I, I was. Thought. I was very lonely. All righty. Well, after that, let's go ahead and roll on here. So, <laughs> so this game, like I said, came out in '92 on the Amiga. Again, it, it gained its popularity on the Genesis slash Mega Drive, uh, where uh, I think that's probably the platform that's most w- widely known on, at least the first one. So this came out in uh, on two discs, published by EA. So you had the big time publisher. The uh, outfit that did this was that uh, developed it was a uh, called Peak Star. Now we've confronted Peak Star before in a few games. I'm going to read off their entire Amiga lineup here and see if you recognize any of these. F1 World Championship Edition, which we haven't never played. Moonshine Racers, which I hear about but I've never played. Is that a like bootlegging game? I think it's a like a cart game. Okay. Um, Sooty and Sweep, which. <laughs> It sounds very British. Sooty and sweet. Very British. And then here's the part you might remember. They did the Thomas the Tank Engine 1 oh, and 2. very familiar with those games. Yes, and so that was Peak Star's line. Now, I looked like gangbusters to try to find any information on Peak Star, where they were located, uh, uh, what the scoop was. I could not find anything, anything on this crew. So I don't know anything about them. I mean, they had a pretty small lineup. They didn't do a lot of stuff off the Amiga either, so... You know, there you go. But there, that was who de- that was who did the development on this. Uh, it runs on the uh, OCS ECS, uh, and this game was converted, but it wasn't converted to a ton of stuff <clears throat> initially. So uh, this was converted on the 3DO, uh, the Game Boy, and the Game Boy Color had had a version, which uh, that'd be interesting. I- I'd like to see what that looks like. Mm-hmm. The Game Gear, which I'd like to have that myself yeah. actually. That was probably a port of the Mega or the uh, Master System. And then right? some of these we got to try, which is the the, Ma- the Master System had a port. Mm-hmm. Of course, the Mega Drive Genesis, and it had a C- Sega CD version and a Saturn version, which we actually did have a look at, and the PlayStation version. And of course, the 3DO. I didn't mention that right. The first one I mentioned. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I, it's ironically of all these, the one I've played the most was on. Well, aside from the Amiga, was the 3DO version. It's one of the 3DO games I have, and so uh, and it it's like a whole different game in a lot of ways. So this is so in essence to break down what this game is. It's a motorcycle game where you race a bunch a field of uh, other racers in 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 a, in a series of different races, mm-hmm. right? With a twist. And the twist is, when you get up near other racers, you can punch them <laughs> effectively. That's or the, kick them. Or I, my guy always punched. I, I don't know if there was no I think way to kick him. Yeah, the, I always when punched. we get into the controls, yeah. I'll show you how you do that. Okay, and, uh, which I don't know what difference it makes, and maybe you know, but I punched every time. And also, the one thing I noticed, another thing you can do in this game is, occasionally you'll wail on a sucker who's got a weapon. 
which I think is a crowbar. And then so you could snag the crowbar, and then you could whale suckers mm-hmm. with a crowbar. Now, uh, I was always under the impression that there were multiple weapons, but I never got anything but the crowbar in this game. So I'm guessing the immediate... And I played this game up, up for hours and hours and well into it. I think I got like the, near the end of the third level. So I played it quite a bit, and I never saw anything but the but the you know club or crowbar. Or yeah, I think it's is. actually a club. Okay, that's what it's called. In the crowbar makes more sense, doesn't it, uh, to me? Because well, who has that a club? It, like a know. billy club. Yeah, but a, a crowbar. You don't carry one of those with you at all times. I'm not daredevil, man. <laughs> um, so this game came out in the Genesis in '91. So this it was a pretty quick turn on that very popular Genesis port. So. Now you've played this game a lot for a lot more years than I have. What did you think? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you've played the Genesis version. What did you think of this compared to what you'd played in the past? Well, I think that they the game itself is pretty much identical. Um, that you know, once you're in the race, you could be playing the Genesis version and the Amiga version. You wouldn't know the difference. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the menu system is really where this game falls apart. They tried to shoe in, they tried to shoehorn in you know keyboard support. Uh, going to the shop and things like that, and it's not immediately apparent how to do those things. In fact, I had to consult the manual to figure out some of the. I'll things. get into that when I we in a minute. Yeah. Um, but the the gameplay itself is is pretty much right on. I mean, there's no way that you can compare this to the 3DO and the Saturn and the PlayStation version because it's total. It's a totally different game. You know, it's 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 four years later. Things had progressed wildly. As it stands on its own, um, it is a competent motorcycle racing game with kind of a gimmick. Um, the combat thing is deeper than it first appears because if you, like, for example, if you decide to wail on one guy but let another guy pass you and win, it can affect your relationship with, with those with, with the people that win. So that part of it is kind of cool, but it's also kind of useless because it doesn't really mean anything. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Um, I, it, during the load screens and, cut, there's, and, and some other stuff, there, you'll get a comment from a, a racer and they'll say some stuff. And there's one chick racer that doesn't like a certain guy. Like, I like Biff. Is a guy she doesn't like. Is it Teresa, the chick racer? I don't know. I didn't catch her name. Is it like Teresa, the chick racer? I don't get it. Oh, yeah, you're funny. I'm going to ignore his idiocy. So, anyway, uh, uh, cut that, too. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the, the she says, like, I don't like Biff. Like, And I always thought to myself, should I wail on this guy if I see him? But when I'm racing, generally, I'm just hauling as much honey as I can up the track. I don't even pay attention to who I'm... I mean, if I, if I wail on a guy, great. But to me, one thing I noticed is that combat... And now, again, I got to the middle of the third level, okay? Which meant I, I cleared all the tracks twice and partially the third time. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's pretty well in. And to me, you could almost not do any combat, and it wouldn't even matter. You could just... I mean... Sometimes if a guy's convenient there, I would go and wail on him just because it was funny. Right. But, I mean, in essence, I didn't get any more money. I didn't see any wacky cut scenes that I didn't think of. I didn't see, I didn't see anything different. There was no bets or anything like that. There was nothing. It was just like you... So, fill me in. Is there a reason? You you said you can do stuff that will get you points or, or, or what What can you do? I never saw any of this stuff. I, well, I I'm, suspected it was there. I'm not really sure. I get... I get mixed up a lot on, oh, and Natasha is the name of the girl Natasha, racer. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, Chris. Um, the um, I can't remember if it's only in the later versions or if it's in this version, um, but the you know the whole like friend and enemy mechanic. I don't think it has any bearing on the amount of money you get. I think just your placement in the race. I think first through fourth, you get money. Okay, you use that money to upgrade your bike. There's five races. If you win all five races, then you are the ultimate road rash king. If you place the top four, you just keep you get to keep going. That's, I think that that's the gist. I mean, of the that's game. I think that's this game, and I'll just go ahead and get into my actual thoughts on the, what I didn't like. This game irritates me in a bunch of ways. Number one, when you said they shoehorn the menus on there, that's that's a polite way of saying the menu system is is garbage. It's garbage. They give you a they give you a, a little on some screens they'll give you like six keys and and a little dot will flash each one and they'll tell you what it does. It's like turn music on and off. There's like, like but there's nothing that tells you well, I'm just like you. There's no I knew you could buy a new bike, but I had no idea how to get there. There's nothing, there's no on screen cue that tells you when to get there, how to get there. 
two players. I knew there was something for two players. I had no idea how to do it. You know, there's a thing that's on the main screen. It's, it's real confusing. Mm-hmm. It's The menu system is atrocious. And, I mean, surely the Genesis has some menu system. Even if you just had to go down and click the button, it would have been better what they had. They should just not even use the keyboard at all for anything if they were going to do it that way. I mean, I hated that. So that was one big problem I had with it. Second problem. Uh, the uh, uh, like I said, it didn't seem like anything you did outside of winning the races meant anything, right? Uh, and it, it was irritating. It would there was so much more. I used to play this game on the PC. I think it was called Death Rally or something like that. But you would you could place bets on on who was going to win the race. You could put bets on yourself. You could take people would hire you to take out other racers, and it was all text based. But if you knocked them out, you would get X amount of money. None of that was here. None of it. And that would have been that would have been an awesome element they could have added. That would be nothing hard for the Amiga to do. It's just you know, you just it's just some calculations effectively. Uh, the weapons, like I said, it's fun to wail on a guy, but really you get there's the one weapon, and it really, I guess, sort of maybe it'll help you win, sort of. But I didn't think it was ne- a necessary act. On top of everything else, we played the Saturn version of this before we played this version. In the Saturn version, it's real stylized and cool, and it looked like a crazy gang of crazy. Maniacs, that the were, kind of people that would do this sort of thing. Like in this version, after every race, there's a there's a majestic scene of you camping or holding hands somebody. And I was like, "What is this? Who's going to hang out with you? You tried to kill them right. with a club." Mm-hmm. You know, that was a no. That was I thought this made, in the cut scenes made no sense. They were they were nice looking, but I well, thought this, that was this silly. Is, this is a perfect example of a game that had premise. And it was executed not ideally, and then when they went back and reworked it, they did a much better job right. fleshing it out. I will say, the, the uh, this is one game, again, ha- having played the newer version first, they went back and made a lot of good changes. Now, all those complaints aside, uh, uh, and there are, some, like, the, it's not the most attractive game. Y- y- there are a few obstacles that crop out, like, occasionally, I mean, there's obviously that, that white car. There's a white car, and there's a series of white cars that'll get in your way, mm-hmm. like the cop. Like, I know the cop can arrest you. There's a cop on a motorcycle. It never happened to me. And whenever I saw the cop, I either wailed on him or just drove past him. So it was, I mean, maybe later on in the game I it think was more I, difficult. And, and maybe somebody in the chat, because I think Hasifa is, is pretty familiar with this game. But I, I believe that if you are knocked over by a car within the vicinity of the cop, the cop can pull up and arrest right. I know Right. I know you can get arrested, because yeah. I saw in the documentation there was a menu for that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it never came into play, you know. Uh, the uh, the fact that you see the same car over and over, it's not a different color, it's not a different type of car, it's the same car uh, over and over. That gets old. All the other racers look the same. There's no differentiating. They're all the same color. They look different than you, but that's it. Uh, the obstacles, I think there's one area where like a cow can be sort of in the road you can hit, and uh, uh, there's some road kill that you can run over that sort of slides you around a little mm-hmm. bit, but that was it. Uh, the scenery was pretty good, but it was sparse. You know, I mean, it wasn't like, again, this is not, a, and, and the frame rate, so this is not Lotus we're talking about here. This is, I wouldn't say, I'd say this is somewhere in the same ballpark as, say, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of some of those motorcycle games we played. I mean, this was not, frame rate wise, this was not at the top of the heap. Yeah, Hang I, On. It was like probably a, a little crummier than Hang right. On. Right. I would put it just a notch right. below. So, even though Hang On's a much older game. I think this is, now, all that said, all my whining and complaining. Uh, I played the heck out of this game because it's fun. Right? It's fun to race. The racing's fun. You get, and especially as you get later on, I mean, you can breeze to the first level. It's pretty simple. Right? Then the second level, you can sort of breeze to the third level. I've had some trouble with those. Those get tough. But when you get those new bikes, you get a good sense of speed. Mm-hmm. You get a good sense of uh, of of. Uh, there's a challenge. It's the game is paced well. The, the riders you have to overtake are tantalizingly close often. And and it's it can be infuriating when you can't catch them, but when you do catch them, it's very satisfying. Right. Uh, so it's that classic race where everyone starts at the beginning, but a, a horde of people just warp speed out in front of you just try to catch them. You never jump out to the lead and never look back. It's uh, Every race I ever had was me barely getting the lead or me coming in second or third mm-hmm. you know i don't know about you yeah but that was, was every, i mean every time me, yeah. so the pain but I, it wasn't so frustrating where i just see one front ride off and i'd be putting along and be like well, i'm screwed yeah i think they do some rubber banding to make it a little bit more fair yeah and me. it was fun that was fun um uh the the fact that you get hit by the car and you have to go back to your bike 
It's a less fun here than it is on the Saturn that we played, but um, it's still kind of a unique aspect of the game. Now, mm. one thing I, in this game, if you don't, if you get knocked off your bike and you don't touch anything, your guy will trot back to his bike. Well, at first I didn't know that, and I was trying to figure out where my bike was and using the controls. And it'll let you. Mm-hmm. It'll let you run all over creation. And it'll take you an hour to find your bike. I noticed that in this version, tapping the fire button didn't do anything to make you go faster. Yeah, it's not like the other In the other versions. version, if you if you slam on your buttons, your guy will move, run quicker to get back to his bike. Right. The only reason, I guess, they give you control is to avoid traffic, you know. Right, which, and again, it, for me, that wasn't, uh, that was never an yeah. issue. Um, the, uh, the, so, but getting back to your bike, it's still kind of neat, you know. Um, uh, you know, so I, I would give the game marks because f- it is fun but uh um you know it, it really i mean if you don't have a documentation for this you're boned i mean you you have to mm-hmm. know how to get to these other menus the bike buying menu it's there's not a ton of it's not real exciting is it i mean for the most part and one thing that i, I wish that they would have done is made the bikes look different you know when you upgrade your bike change the sprite just a little bit just to it wouldn't show take you. much yeah, yeah, yeah and they, they don't do that i mean it's a it's a i don't Having not played this on the Genesis, and I know you've, I mean, maybe you've had a little more, but I mean, I'm assuming this is exactly the same, like you said, mm-hmm. and and so, but that, it's, it's very lazy. Yeah. It's a lazily done uh, game. Like, I mean, just something that small, or changing the car's palette every once in a while, anything. Right. Or how about a truck mm-hmm. that comes, or another bike, anything that comes out of Pike mm-hmm. would have been cool. Uh, it just isn't there. Uh, the, I will say the different the different tracks are challenging and fun. There's some awesome jump elements. I, I like that. I like when you go into the air. There's not enough of them, is there? I mean, yeah. really, that, there are not enough. The tracks are very challenging and fun. You know, I I could sort of memorize them. You know, but I mean, it was there. Some of them you go up, like towards the end, you're going like ten miles. Mm-hmm. It's a long race, you know, and so that would have been neat. Some weather elements would have probably been fun. You know, I don't think I don't remember any of the rain or snow or anything like mm-hmm. that, which that would have been neat or nighttime. I, I just don't know how um, you know the, the, with the frame rate chugging along as it is, adding rain or anything like that. I don't know. How yeah, that would have I mean, you're you're, you're you're right, but but I'm just wish I'm just thinking wishful yeah. thinking now. Um, you know, Hasifa in the chat also has another fun tidbit about getting off your bike. He says if you crash right before you cross the finish line, you can actually run across the finish line. And win the race that way. You don't that, have to that, cross it on your bike. That's pretty funny. Actually. <laughs> I, and that's. I mean, and, and the thing is, I often would wreck right at the finish line, but I, I never actually like you know had to run across it. Mm. But oh, so let me. While I'm still on, on my high horse, or the music's no good. Uh, I didn't like any of the music at all. See, this is where you and I dither, dither, d- differ. I've been dithering. Um, I, I thought that the music was fine. I thought it was pleasant. We've played so many racing games on the Amiga that have no background music. Um, this I thought that these were perfectly passable. I, I I thought they were duds. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I mean, this is the Amiga. You tell me that is that gets you fired up to race? No, okay. that's no good. Okay. I, I thought the music was no good. Okay, a letdown. Uh, frankly, I didn't I didn't like it. Uh, so let's get this straight. I didn't like the, I didn't like the music, the menus, or the graphic elements. The gameplay was suspect. <laughs> and after all that. Oh, let's talk about the two-player element. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, hell, split-screen action, two players way out in the... No. 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 No split-screen action. No way on your buddy. It's a it's a hot seat take two turn player. situation. If you can figure out how exactly to implement the two-player, <laughs> which is bizarre yeah, in itself. Yeah, the, the name entering scheme and the way... Again, the menus leave a lot to be desired. As an added bonus, save feature, no. It's codes. Now, I can get by with codes, but this is a computer... We can't have a save game element. Yeah. Again, it's a it's a port from the Genesis version. It's a direct port, so, but I didn't give a crap. Right. You know, so uh, I wasn't impressed with that either. But it's I'm telling you, I, I'm complaining so much about this game. But I played this game so much this week because at its core, it's a fun game. Mm-hmm. It's a fun racing game. It's not the best at anything, but the elements blend together to make it a fun game. And the engine. You know, we I just played uh, I just put out uh, that the the uh, uh, outrun the the last outrun game I can't remember what the heck it's called the not outrun but not Europa but the other outrun Turbo outrun that's okay. what it was. This game is like I liked I, I wanted to like Turbo outrun but the the frame rate was garbage. All right, it was no good. Plus a lot of other problems. This reminds me of like the step up from that engine. This one was just good enough to get over the top to where I could enjoy it. You know, 
If it had been any slower, I wouldn't have liked it. But it was just quick enough. The tracks were just fun enough. They were just laid out nice enough for me to get a kick out of it. Uh, I, um, the sad thing is, I, I've labored under the belief that there was an AGA version of this because I didn't even mention it to you. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not one missed opportunity there. That could have they could have had something that would run faster and look nicer, uh, that, but it didn't happen. Uh, so I that's wonder kind of when um, I wonder when EA abandoned Amiga as a platform. Because that might have had something to do with it. They might have already moved on by... Well, 90, 92, the Amiga was still putting along pretty decently. But yeah, you never know. They may have just said, the heck with computers, we're mm-hmm. going to go straight up for consoles. I don't know. But yeah, I mean... Because this... 92 was when the first Madden came out. And when they saw those bucks, when the money train rolled in. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, 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 did, they did a very weak port. You know, but again, not playing the Genesis. Maybe after I play the Genesis, I'll have more respect for this. But I mean, anyway, it goes. Their flaws are flaws. So yeah. if the Genesis version has the same flaws, you know, it is what it is. Right. Uh, but like I said, overall, I enjoyed it. I, I'll play it again, probably. Sadly, uh, did I enjoy the Saturn version more? Absolutely. But of course, it's a Saturn. Uh, um, so further iterations. And I've always heard that this game got much, much better. On even the Genesis, like the second and third ones, they, you know, they got there was they every one of them was a lot better. So it's a shame that the Amiga didn't get. It's a lot like uh, when we played Star Control, mm-hmm. like you saw. Okay, this is pretty good. This is a good starting point. Now let's and then they never got that second, right. that second bump. So, eh, you know, I it's not the best game, but it was I I enjoyed it more than I should have or had any right to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel the same way. I feel like this is a, a good game that was made better uh, with the help of you know graphical improvements and a fleshing out of the story. Um, but overall, I mean, I just I just found it. I did I I didn't want to turn the game off while playing it like uh, other games that we reviewed. It so. is addi- It is strangely addictive. And mm-hmm. and the funny thing is when the when the uh, rubber meets the road, if you will. Um, Cut that even, out. Even with the. Uh, <laughs> Even with the crap, you know, not that great frame rate and not that great backgrounds, the actual racing on it was very playable. The actual, you know, it's it's fun. The jumps are fun. And like I said, going past guys is fun. And the element of whack, I mean, if it's worthless, it's fun. So that's what really makes the game stand up past some of these other games we play yeah, that are just motorcycle Absolutely. Games. Like, I'd rather play this than hang on. For, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, game. because, I mean, there's just, there's more to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, did you do some uh, review scrounging? <laughs> you know, it's funny. The last time that this happened, we're going to. Why when I switch devices? Um, again, the chat saved us, but can I use your restroom real quick? Yeah, right. yeah. I'll let you figure that out. Right. So yeah. I mean, the whole review? No, 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 not the whole review. I'm talking about like. When we started, when when I said, did, did you check to see how the game reviewed? Oh, good, because I didn't. I, I didn't have that in my notes. Ironically. Okay, so I'm glad you. I'm glad we'll, I, we'll just we'll just that's recut weird, that. I almost always put that in. I'm surprised I don't know what happened there. Oh well, you can look that up real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, I've got I've got him up. Excuse me, Chad. Bo, we'll get this in the can yet, by God. Yeah. All right, chat. Thank you so much. Again, you saved us. Magnets all around. <laughs> um, Hope that spider's not still in here. Bro. Yeah. Um, I think it's bigger than I sorry, guys. I mean, guys, you, you've saved us twice. I swear, when I when I fixed it on that the scene before, when I fixed it on this scene, 
that I, I went and I looked and it was right there, but it disappeared on me somehow. And so uh, you guys saved the day again. But um, I don't know. I guess we didn't mention this on the um, pre-show, but we are recording. This should be much higher fidelity um, than than previous weeks because we are recording on the Monster Desktop. I'm running long cables to uh, all of our monitors and uh, running a, a, a wireless keyboard and mouse and stuff. So we basically brought the desktop here, um, and uh, I'm hopeful that, that it looks better. Um, and we can do things like having five things playing at once. Uh, right now, my CPU is pegged at 22%, um, even with all this stuff going on. So, been working out, though. Have I, oh, uh, I haven't. I plan on starting again, though. It's like a little workout area. You get your TV pushed up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, I remember when I was going through the weightlifting thing. You got hurt. And then I got hurt. Instantly. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, to figure out what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. We're all we're all good to go. All right. Good, because I can look less like a jerk now. No, I it was have. my fault for not asking you about that before the show. Oh, no, I always have. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know why I didn't print them out this time. I usually have the reviews. <clears throat> my... All right. So, so where are we? We'll go back. Picking this up from. Okay, just let. I'll take the lead here. Oh God, no. Big <laughs> <laughs> star. All right. Um. All right, Aaron. So uh, I guess we should take a look at how this game reviewed. All right, let's have a go. But while we do that, we'll look over here at our port comparisons, and um, and uh, let you check out all the different versions while I'm looking these up. So it looks like this game reviewed uh, pretty well in the middle. Uh, most of the reviews are in the 70s or low 80s. Uh, there is a high of 92 from Amiga Action in August of 94. But the one Amiga in August of 94 rated it a 65. So this isn't one of those cases where the later it is, the lower the scores. Um, it's it unusual that they well. gave that a 94. In ni- or ni- I would say a 94, they gave it a 92. Because 92. Well, usually as these things get older, they start killing them. In Amiga Computing 112, which came out in May 97, this thing got an 86%. Mm, so, okay, very yeah, good. Yeah. So anyway, there's the reviews. What about eBay action? Um, this game, I expected it to be plentiful on eBay, and I was incorrect. There aren't that many copies going around. So <clears throat> I found one that was selling in the UK uh, for 23 to 26 US dollars shipped. I think it's a pretty good price. Uh, there, would, had a, there had been one shipped and sold in the US, which I was wondering if we'd gotten a release of this, and apparently we did. And they went for 30 bucks shipped, US dollars. And then there's one currently available in Italy uh, for 35 bucks or best offer. It's US dollars. So. Uh, that seems to be the you know right around that thirty dollar mark is what they're going for. The uh, this was released in a wacky compilation. The compilation was called Help. <laughs> <laughs> We're running out of money. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, what a weird. And, and unfortunately, I could not find any copies of Help. <laughs> for the next compilation point at the end. I don't know what else is in that, but I don't yes. know how this fits in there unless you're maybe it's told from the perspective of someone getting hit in the face of the club. Right, one seventy miles an hour <laughs> on the road. <laughs> All right, so this has been our uh, look at Road Rash. Um, We're going to close things out by thanking the illustrious members of the Twitch chat uh, who have saved us twice tonight when we had audio issues. So I'd like to thank Pishbot, NakZR, Hasifa, uh, and Gary Hucker for hanging out with us this evening. Uh, We try and record Friday nights at twitch.tv slash Amigos Podcast, so you're welcome to come join us. Um, I'd also like to thank our Patreon supporters. So um, if you would like to support this show, you can go to patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast. Uh, we appreciate it. We need all the support we can get, don't That's we? right. <laughs> and uh, I will be singing the Patreon names this week uh-huh. in the spirit of Tracy Chapman. Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbey, Chris Fools, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham Vecchi, Brent Daddy, you ain't dancing, everybody's me. A Brian's red to invent Gary Hucker, C. Brian Joe, <laughs> Paul Harrington, and Duncan, Styles and Alan Kebab, and Anthony, tapes from the crib, Josh Nan. 
Will Williams, Adam Bradley, Neil Mansell, Jonas Rulo, Tia Shea, Nelson, Gib, Tommy, Homestead, and Daniel, Bingston, Brutal, Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, Kjolbjorn Barman. <laughs> oh, Kjol is out the end now? That's the end. Man. You got to end Tracy with Tracy Chapman, that's pretty obscure, Boat. Well... Sometimes I like to get I like the I like the deep cuts. Oh yeah, I like the deep cuts. Okay, on, on on Easy Rock Paradise, <laughs> I've heard more Tracy Chapman than I ever knew existed. <laughs> <laughs> I want a fast car to get the hell away from her. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great week wherever you are. We'll see you again next week. We're going to play R Type, that classic space R types. shooter. R Types. We're going to play both the R Types. All right, one big R Type R. All right, we should have did it for Pirate Week. That's but we true. We missed the boat we on missed that. Missed it by a week. We'll see you next time, guys. Until then, adios. Arr.